Greetings. May I ask you, ask the audience, please, to stand for the processional of the Kentucky College of Optometry Class of 2021. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Kentucky College of Optometry Class of 2021 White Coat Ceremony. I want to welcome the Kentucky College of Optometry Class of 2021, their friends and family, as they witness the transition from primarily classroom work to clinical patient care. A warm welcome to our distinguished platform party representing the leadership of the University of Pikeville, including our president and provost, Drs. Burton Webb and Lori Wirth. And, is Governor Patton in the and as always, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize Governor Patton. Governor Patton, are you out there somewhere? Yes, sir. Thank you, Governor Patton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Welcome to our optometric colleagues and parents of some of our students here to participate in the program by coding their family members. And to our sponsors, a sincere thank you for your support of this event. Without it, these events simply are, are not able to be conducted. I have to thank the University of Pikeville and Kentucky College of Optometry staff for the many hours spent in planning and organizing this event. Thanks to Charity Deal, our events coordinator, Sharon Blackburn, our clinical operations manager, Laura Dameron and Kate Hensley from Public Relations, Eric McLaughlin, Tim, uh, Tiffany Coleman and Courtney Justice from Student Affairs for all their hard work and preparation. Our facilities crew and Aramark partners have worked long hours to prepare this event and we are very grateful. Last but certainly not least, I must thank, uh, excuse me, I must thank the members of our faculty in attendance today. Their dedication to preparing our students for this phase and their education cannot be understated. If you would, please stand and allow us to recognize you and your effort. I know some of you are up on the top, but uh, if you're a faculty member, please stand and allow us to recognize you. This very simple ceremony represents the phase in optometric education in which students begin their role as a clinical optometrist in training, where they begin to learn the art and science of vision and healthcare in a real patient care setting. The white coat ceremony symbolizes and affirms the student's commitment to the patient and their well-being. As is our tradition, we will begin with the invocation by Dr. Rob Music. Dr. Music. Let us pray. <clears throat> Author of our journey and giver of life, today as we celebrate another milestone in the lives of these care providers, we ask your blessing on them. May your spirit clothe them with your compassion and mercy and enfold them with your love. May you fill them with the boundless empathy of Christ and empower a new level of trust with their patience. Now as the world sees them with a new level of hard-earned authority, please multiply their level of servant hearts and equip them with a richer, fuller amount of integrity. May you call forth from them the highest levels of professionalism and use them as community leaders who change lives through time, effort, knowledge, and considerate hearts. And just as Jacob honored Joseph with a special coat, may these coats be a continual reminder of the unique calling you have on their lives, and may this calling fuel them for works of justice and mercy. And as you clothe the prodigal with a new garment of hope and grace, 
May this white coat be a physical sign of your faithfulness through the very difficult times and winding journey which led him to this moment. Yet also as the prodigal, may they know that no one garment or one role ever defines who they truly are. Today as the next phase begins, may you surround them with mentors and models who will help navigate all the unlearned areas and may you fill their lives with patience who will forever etch into their hearts a new way to see the world. We ask this blessing in Christ's name. Amen. Well, good morning. Good afternoon, folks. I want to add my greeting and the greeting of the university to those that have been brought already. My name is Burton Webb. I'm the president here. Uh, before I go too far, I want to recognize uh, a group of folks who haven't been recognized yet, and I'm just going to ask them to wave. I know there are a few of our trustees here. Would you just wave, if you would? There we go. I, there are a couple down here and maybe a couple over there. Good to see you guys here. Thank you so much for supporting us. We deeply appreciate that. I remember being uh, a bright and inquisitive child when I was in first and second grade, but in the third grade, something started to happen, and I really didn't understand it. I was sitting in the middle toward the back of the class, and all of a sudden, I couldn't understand what the teacher was doing on the chalkboard anymore. Very quickly, I was falling behind. My reading wasn't doing very well, and I couldn't understand the math problems, and my teacher was paying attention. And she sent a note home with me one day and said, Burton seems to be doing this. <laughs> yeah, it's because I couldn't see. I didn't know. I just thought things were a little bit blurry. I had no idea why. And that's when... I got to meet my favorite doctor ever. Dr. Sniff was my first optometrist. I know it's an odd name for an optometrist. He should have been an ENT, but he was an optometrist. And the reason I loved Dr. Sniff was because when I went to the family practitioner, I always got a shot. And I didn't like that. I would leave with a sore body part. And when I went to the dentist, I got fillings. And I didn't like that either because my mouth hurt every time I left the dentist. But when I went to the optometrist, I'd walk outside and everything was crisp and clear again. And that was a great feeling. It didn't hurt to get examined. And when you left, everything was better. And that's the way I still think about optometry. It's a wonderful profession, a profession in which you provide not only a service, but the opportunity, the ability to see. And so I'm deeply grateful for that. I'm deeply grateful for your profession and for each of you who has chosen to pursue this. Bless you in all that you do, and thank you for being here today. Good afternoon, my name is Lori Worth and I am the provost of the university. I see the academics at the institution. Welcome to campus, family members, and to our students class of 2021. A group that I would like to stand so we could recognize you. Recognize you for your investment in the lives of our students. All of us come from different walks of life. Some of our students, this may have been an opportunity for you to be in a professional school, maybe the first in your family to have gotten to college. The investment as parents that we make in the lives of our children, that's a big deal. Parents, would you please stand so we could recognize you today for your investment in the lives of these students. Thank you. An additional thank you to our faculty. I know that you are above and Cliff already recognized you. To be in a program such as this one, it takes commitment in the lives of our faculty members and our staff who accompany them. You are in a program that will prepare you. They'll prepare you for interaction with children, with parents, with individuals who are older. They will need your support. They will need your patient care. The content that you will learn in the classroom and you will continue to within a clinical setting, they will depend on each of you. We thank you for your investment in our program. Thank you for your commitment, the long nights, the early mornings with coffee. Go forth and do well. Thank you. So this is the class of 2021. Why you guys look good. Okay, welcome everybody. I had to figure out what a white coat ceremony was, so I did a 
Google search just to look up some definitions. White, and the optics people will appreciate this. An adjective of the color of milk or fresh snow due to the reflection of most wavelengths of visible light. Coat, a noun, or outer garment having sleeves and typically extending at or below the hips. Ceremony, a formal public occasion celebrating a particular event where the winners are presented with awards at a special ceremony. So this is your white coat ceremony. What I feel about the white, carousel, white coat ceremony is it's an honor. It's a privilege. It's something which is earned. It's a rite of passage, a, metamor a metamorphosis from student to intern. So having said that, welcome to Keiko's 2021 white coat ceremony. I also have the uh, privilege of introducing our keynote speaker. It is an honor to welcome Dr. Max Ernst, and it's in your programs, but I'll read it. Dr. James Mac Ernst is currently the president of SECO, the South Southeast Council of Optometry, and has served on the executive committee since 2015. Dr. Ernst has also served as chairman of Vision USA, an optometric charity from 2005 to 2015. He was also a founding member of the AOA's Disaster Relief Committee in 1998. He has been a member of the Kentucky Optometric Association for more than 30 years and served as its president from 1997 to 1998. He was awarded the Kentucky Optometric Association of Thomas of the Year in the year 2000. His work as president and legislative chair led to Kentucky's insurance access and notably the landmark Kentucky Children's Vision legislation. Dr. Ernst is a 1986 graduate of the University of Houston College of Optometry and a 1981 graduate of the University of Michigan. He lives in Alexandria, Kentucky with his wife, Carol. They have two daughters, Emily and Elizabeth. Without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Max Ernst. Thank you all. Uh, it is an honor to stand in front of the future of my profession and be able to say a few words to you. Hopefully, they will make sense. Um, Dean Caudill, President Webb, um, family members, faculty, and our students of the class of 2021, thank you for having me here today. It's an honor to be here. When Dr. Caudill and Dr. Bacigalupi asked me to speak before you today, I said, yes, I'll do it. And then they said, give some comments about the white coat and the white coat ceremony. So the first thing I thought of was my own white coat ceremony. I didn't have one. 35 years ago, uh, they basically told us, run down to the uniform store, buy a clinic jacket, and make sure it reasonably fits. That was it. So about 12 or 14 of us piled into a Buick Electra went downtown in Houston by the medical center and bought the cheapest polyester white jacket we could find and thus began my checkered career with trying to not wear a clinic jacket for the rest of my career. <laughs> but I had to have some positive words to say about this ceremony and the white coats that you have today. First of all, they look a lot better than mine. Uh, one, they're clean. Two, they're not stained with ink, and they're not, the pockets aren't bulging with various clinic equipment at this point. They will, though. Um, so we think about what the white coat means and sort of perception of what people see, of it, what our patients see. The first and the very basic is just cleanliness and sterility. A hundred plus years ago, physicians weren't very well respected. Our professions were seen just a little bit above butchery in some respects, okay? Doctors, you know, we didn't wash our hands, things like that. All that has changed now, and the white coat became the symbol of cleanliness and sterility. You know, so in our time, though, it means look good, be well, relatively well-groomed when you are going in to see a patient, and you know, fellas, I can tell you, you know, look good, be sharp. Ladies, I will not dare to speak how, how to dress to you. I'm not that brave. <laughs> so, but cleanliness and sterility of the whiteness is one of the 
the very basic levels of what the code means. The second sort of level is clinical authority. When you walk into the room, that patient is sitting there, they have questions, you have the answers. They think you do. Not every day you have all the answers, but you'll have most of them. And it is when you step in there, people are nervous, some are afraid, have fear, some are just curious about their eyes. You're going to give them those answers. That is your job. When we walk in to see a patient, it is your opinion of all the testing that you're learning right now, all these tests that you've learned in, in your courses over the past two years, ultimately comes down to what your opinion is of that patient's visual state and health of their eyes. That's what they're looking for, and that's what you're going to give them, and that's sort of what that code means. You have that clinical authority to give them that opinion. The third thing, and this is sort of on our own minds, and you just heard Dr. Caudill say, and I'm sure you've heard it before, the art and science of the profession. Up to this point, you've learned the science. You've gone through four years of undergraduate wherever you went. You've had biology. You've had chemistry, physics, <sighs> calculus. <laughs> and now you've had two years of optometry science, optics, you know, anatomy, pharmacology, all these things. Beginning today, you become a clinician. And that's exactly what Dr. Caudill was saying. You begin to learn how to learn the art of your profession. And the art is how to treat human beings, not your classmates. You've worked on your classmates now. They're not, they're not human beings. But the real human <laughs> beings that are out there need you and every day you learn something new. And it's that art that is so important. And that ultimately is what the highest perception in my mind, the white jacket means. So begin today, learn your art every day from now to the day you retire. Because we learn something new every day. Somebody is gonna come in and make you think in your offices, in your clinics, every day, something new is going to come along and you're going to have to figure it out. And that's the art of the profession. So let me wrap up with a couple of things. As by now, most of you have seen, there's a little bright envelope in your programs. Some of you have looked inside of it already and know what's in there. I would have looked. There's a one half of a dollar bill inside of there. What that stands for is you are halfway there. And in two, and they don't match. I have the other half of your dollars, okay? I have the other half. And in two years, I promise you, you will get the other half, okay? And then when you get that other half, you can put them together and say, that's the first dollar I ever earned as an optometrist. So in conclusion, and I'm always a very quick speaker, I believe it, hit it hard, hit it fast, and get off before they start throwing things at you. <laughs> a very appropriate Kentucky metaphor is for today's ceremony. Right now you're at the 5 eighths pole. You're going through the far turn next year. And the year after that, you're going to come down the stretch. So as you come down to the finish line, don't get disqualified. <laughs> Take your places. Mm
Let's make them wait. We do this all day. That's right. Okay, it's my honor to uh, call the names for the people to be coded today. First, we'll have Alexa, Rianne, Arancibia. Beverly Atue. <laughs> Sydney Page Bailey. Carly Balzer. <laughs> Julia Bao. Jessica Joanne Beckman. <laughs> William Henry Bellamy. Kelly D. Bentley. <laughs> Michael I. Bisco. Douglas D. Boyd. <laughs> Cloris Elizabeth Castro. Alicia Chang. <laughs> Cassidy Lee Coleman. Ashley Marissa Culver.
Breck Avery Dakin. Alexander J. DeSalvo. <laughs> Catherine Lee Joyce Donaldson. Aaron Finn. <laughs> Should have got Velcro. Christina Wynn. <laughs> Tyler Joseph. Jonathan Keane. <laughs> Philip J. Kelly. Paige Corrali. <laughs> Yana Kuczynska. Carolyn Marie Lane. <laughs> Tanner B. Lay. Alina Little. <laughs> Matthew S. Little. Sarah Mahmood. <laughs> Ambrosia KSL McKinney.
Abbas Malik. Kelsey McCluskey. <laughs> Wayne Mutter. Mohammed S. Naja. <laughs> Chantel Nunes. Elena Larray Webb. <laughs> Chan Denis R. Patel. Ishani Patel. <laughs> Trevor B. Peden. Bryce T. Peak. <laughs> Yusef Jackson Pippen the third. Matthew Henry Prophet. <laughs> Logan E. Richard. Sandra Maria Rugama.
Joseph Savidra. Shania Kia Scott. <laughs> Hannah Sigmund. Kylie Swingle. <laughs> Ashley Taylor. Joseph Tegenkamp. <laughs> Kaylee Thomas. Rachel Snow White. <laughs> Emily Brooke Williams. Chelsea Whittington. <laughs> and Ashley Louise Wright. Look at you all. Don't forget, take band-aids to clinic, some gum, all that kind of stuff. You've got all that in your, in your coat, you'll be ready to go. You guys look fantastic. Well, the profession of optometry is privileged to serve the eye care needs of the public and is entrusted by society to do so in a professional and ethical manner. The placement of the patient's interest above self-interest is the ethical responsibility of all healthcare professionals. Specifically, optometrists have the duty to look after the best interest of their patients with regard to their patient's eye, vision, and general health. Additionally, the ethical optometrist strives to protect and enhance the health and welfare of the public in general. Will the University of Pikeville Kentucky College of Optometry Class of 2021 
please rise to pledge your commitment to the next phase of your training, clinical care. So consistent with the, the standards of professional conduct for optometric clinical practice, please repeat after me. I will give 10% of my future earnings to Dr. Cl oh, sorry, no, no <laughs> I'm sorry, that, I don't know where that came from, I'm sorry, that was not on here. Let's try it again, please repeat after me. I will ensure that all persons have access to eye, vision, and general health care in an environment of faith, social justice, and human dignity. I will provide care that is consistent with established clinical practice guidelines based on the latest scientific knowledge and procedures. I will provide care that is consistent with established I will remain current with the prevailing scope of practice and standards of care to benefit my patients. I will respect the rights of my patients to be active participants in decisions affecting the, their health care. I will inform patients of, or their legal guardian about the patient's health care and health care options. I will hold in confidence all protected health care health and other personal information. And lastly, but maybe not least, I will conduct myself with good character in all my actions to build trust and respect with my patients, the public, and my colleagues. Nice job. I'd like to welcome the students to the next phase of your training and best of luck. Now, if the audience would please rise for the recessional and welcome the class of 2021.